It is Wednesday, Obsessive Sneaker Disorder, episode 338, episode 338. Yes, it is officially, 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 officially the aftermath after NBA All-Star Weekend 2015 that went down in good old New York City. Thank you for tuning in as you do each and every week. My name is D. Wells, along with the soul doctors and disorderlies around the worldwide world. Man, did you like all the sneakers that came out? Did you buy some sneakers that came out? Did you hunt for some sneakers that came out? Or maybe you missed out on some sneakers that came out. But nonetheless, we are here to talk about that as well as sneakers, fashion, art, art for your feet, question mark, are they really? This is OSC episode 338. Let's jump right on to it, get right to it. He is back, Mr. 305, Mr. Size 15 King is in the building. What's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah, man, it's been a minute, you know, I'm on my grind. If y'all check my IG, y'all always know I'm moving and shaking, how I move and shake. You know, every once in a while, I'll pop in and let y'all know what's good. Absolutely. So so what's what's the good word in the great state of Florida, particularly, though, Miami, MIA? I mean, everybody bundled up like it's a blizzard out here. It's only about <laughs> like 50-something degrees. I see people with scarves and, and ah, boots and stuff like that. Man. I'm walking around. And a T-shirt and then some cargo pants. I'm good, but these people don't know how to act once it drops past 60. Mm. <laughs> typical, typical, typical. Well, hey, the bottom of the map is, is cold or cooler than normal this winter. So, you know what? It, it's, it's par for the course, I guess, as we say, right? Par for the yes, course. Sir. Well, let's jump right into it. Let's go straight from 305 to Brooklyn, USA, 11238. Paper chases in the bill. What's up, sir? Greetings, Soul Doctor D. Wells, Soul Doctor Size 15 King. What up? What up? Cheers. Here for episode number 338 Fashion, Art, Fashion, or Art, Fashion, and Art, Art, and Fashion, whatever, (laughs) however you want to flip it. But we're here for. A continuation of last week's episode where we spoke to the panel to the panel of soul doctors about who they thought would win NBA All Star Weekend. Yep. And um, there was a lot that went on all across New York City, um, and the tri state area on a whole for NBA All Star Weekend. But um surely there was the usual ratchet behavior that goes on, but that's for a different show. We don't cover that stuff here. You could go to um, TMZ or a couple other places for that. So we don't necessarily cover that here. But yeah, there was a lot of ratchet behavior that went on just the same. Um, even from a few artists and and personalities in the industry that kind of showed out a little bit. But needless to say, you know, we're experienced with what they call the all-star experience. So we were none too surprised with some of what we saw went down and all of the outlet sneakers that came out. (laughs) Mm. So we're also going to have a recap shortly of the All-Star Sneaker Summit that went down here in New York on Sunday as well. Um, But yeah, it's time for us to get into what we normally do. We appreciate Educate Elevate here on OSD. And uh, we're going to start off first with our sneaker stock report. So here's how we look in today's size 15 king. We're looking at Nike finishing at $93.62 per share, up 176 on a day. Skechers finished at $66.46 per share, up 19 cents. VF Corporation, Vanity Fair Corporation, stock checkered letters VFC, finished at 75.34, down six cents per share on the day. Under Armour, who we'll get into a little bit later, finished at 74 dollars and 12 cents per share, up 122 on the day. Decker's Outdoor Corporation, 
I don't know. I've seen a downtick in the amount of Uggs I've been seeing on the street lately, but maybe it's just me. Decker's mm -hmm. Outdoor Corporation finished at $74.01 per share, down $0.86 cents per. Foot Locker Incorporated finished at $53.77 per share, up $0.12 cents per share. Adidas AG on the OTC market finished at $37.01 per share, up $0.22 cents per share. Puma AG on the ETR market finished at 171.15 in euros, down 115. eBay on the Nasdaq finished at 56.90 cents per share, up 49 cents per. And Finish Line finished on the Nasdaq also at 23.78 cents per share, up 20 cents. So, if you're keeping score like we've been for the past few weeks, it was a bloody last few weeks where it was mostly red, but the only stocks that took a little dip in the share today were Vanity Fair Corporation VF, um, Decker's Outdoor Corporation, and Puma are the only three who are down on the day. So once again, you'll find the results of these 10 stocks that we watch live every Wednesday on OSD. So you want to learn how to invest and get in on the other side of the game, make sure you hit us up at info at OSD Live, and we'll be sure to show you how to do this, son. Nice. So, what do we see there? SFK, you haven't weighed in on the business tip in a while with that very heavy business mind that you have. Uh, for the most part, I mean, a lot of the companies are looking to liquidate their inventory because it's the close of fourth quarter. So... In order for their stock price to either maintain or go up, all these retail companies are looking to get rid of all of their old product because it's fourth quarter. So as long as, one, the stock price continues to either stay at the same level or go higher, they'll continue to make money. But also look at after February, I think it's February or mid-March is when they do their annual reports. Yep. So that's when you'll see either an uptick or a downtick in the stock prices, depending on where their inventory lies. So yep. if, you go, if you go into a lot of these stores, you'll definitely see clearance sales. you definitely see a clearance sale going on right now on Nike.com. Yep. Every, re every retail location is looking to liquidate their product before the close of fourth quarter so that when they do their annual report, they'll end low in inventory. Yep. We're already starting to see it, so it's absolutely correct. So just to remind people, get in on that other side of the game. Don't just be a customer. Try to do what you can to get in on the other side of the game so that when you're not buying shoes, you're still winning. So D. Wells, what's happening with you up there in 100 inches of snow? Oh, man. I wish I had invested in a um, snowblowing company and, and, you know, plows and trucks and all that kind of stuff right about now. You ain't got no John Deere, baby? Shoo, man. I mean, if, if, if we had bought stock in John Deere, we'd have made our money back tenfold by now. You need that John Deere in your life. And ten, tenfold. So, now things are good. People, I mean, it's strictly, um, like I've been saying, uh, if you've... I tell people all the time it's been strictly Gore-Tex and you know you know heavy you know heavy jackets heavy you know heavy boots Gore-Tex you know uh, light fabrics as well but our Gore-Tex line and back so it's just been cold I mean we actually hit at one point um, negative seven degrees and negative thirty seven with wind chill oh that sounds fun you know and then um, yes we have officially a hundred and three plus uh, inches of snow on the ground. Oh, you know, great! So nice. Just, just great rolling, it's and it's actually if I, you know I can look out the window right now, and and it, it was snowing early, and it's now the the cars are covered, so it just continues. But nonetheless, you know I I saw some folks today actually wearing a pair of um uh, I couldn't tell what they were because their pants you know their pants were over them, but I could tell that they were sneakers, and I could tell that they were new, and I was like. You're a brave soul because right now it's like nasty and slippery and the last thing anyone wants to do is fall and bust their ass. But, you know, hey. Yep. Mother Nature says take that. She's pulling a puffy. Take that. Yeah, facts. And you're going to like it. 
Yeah. Man. So well, what, Diggy, you yeah. know what, though? I'm going to tell you. If you would have just invested in a pair of these, you wouldn't be so upset about the snow. Okay, a pair of Yeezys? So if you would have just... walked around in them, or, or, or are we talking about... If you would have just did this, look. Yeah, right? Come on. You know, I, you know when the sneakers has touched a point with everyone and in the news when I've got relatives who don't pay any attention to sneakers, but they heard about this sneaker and and quickly you know called or text and said, "What do you think about the Yeezy sneakers?" And I, I mean, people, I mean, what are we talking? Three hundred and fifty dollars a pair? Yeah, you know, come on, three fifty. I mean. Know. That's nothing to kick around in the snow, and they got boost in them. They're boost. Yeah, they got boost. The if you if someone try to wear these in the snow, and actually walk and try to get from point A to point B, you are gonna slip and bust your ass. Guaranteed. Nah, man. You don't understand. It's Yeezy. Jesus walks. Yeah. Okay. Jesus walks. All right, but not easy. <laughs> Come, on. Come on, son. You never been no. to a Yeezy concert? I, I don't. I don't understand what the infatuation is. But I mean, let's be honest. We see <clears throat> Visvim, Maharishi, and you know all these other "quote unquote" houses, brands that mm -hmm. have heavily influenced Kanye West, and that's what he's applied or or taken and and created here. So, but like I said, when I when the, we first saw pictures prior to the Grammys. I think this is their safe sneaker. This is their this is their Fifty Shades of Grey, you know? <laughs> and and they gave Kanye West that that safety word, so they knew when not to uh, keep going further and further. And that you know that word is yellow. That means caution. That means slow down, and and that's what they're doing. So um, we're gonna see some other stuff. We have actually seen some other sneakers in the collection, particularly a Roche Run esque, you know, pair yeah. of sneakers. But yeah. these. Hot garbage. I'm not feeling them. I'm not. So but. let me tell you this story. Um, I'm not sure who was standing next to me at the sneaker summit. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Alan, you remember this story where uh -oh. there was a young kid, real big white kid, walking around selling these for $1,000 in a size 12. So I stopped him, and I said, I'm not playing any game with you. I just want to get a quick look at the shoe in person. You know, it's been all the hype behind the shoe. Mm. So, you know, I turned him over, and I said, all right, I said, do you know what this is here on the bottom? I was pointing to the boost. And he goes, no, it's just a white bottom of a shoe, right? So then I said, I turned it back over, and I looked at him. He was about six feet maybe a little taller. I said, what do you like about these shoes? Mm. I said, give me one attribute about these that you like, that you, you like. He goes, um, I don't know, they're high tops. Um, hey, they're high tops. <laughs> he goes, um, it's a cool color. Okay. I said, so let's keep it real. I said, so you only bought these shoes because they're tied to Kanye West, right? Mm. He said, yeah, that's about it. I said, I see, because you were trying to find something positive to say about these shoes, and you couldn't. And he goes, well, yeah, they're Yeezys, man. So I said, All right, what if I told you, this is a real conversation. I wish I could remember who was standing next to me when I had this conversation. I said, what if I told you, this is fictional, of course, I said, what if I told you that when Kanye made these, the inspiration was he hates white people and he thinks they're all crackers. He goes, well, then I'd be charging 1200 and I'd have bought more. <laughs> <laughs> I walked away. I like him. <laughs> Smart man. Hey, so, sell controversy, right? That's what he's doing. He's, he, he sells, he, he capitalized from controversy. This kid was about 15 years old. <laughs> Mm. So my coworker I, I, girlfriend sold up here. What's that? My coworker, his mm -hmm. girlfriend downloaded the app and got her here and sold it for eleven fifty. Good for See. her. So she said um, those are the ugliest things she ever seen. It it was it was it was good to see him brutally honest. The the kid brutally honest. 
He never got that thousand dollars walking around in the summit for those because I saw him pack them up and leave at some mm. point. Thank God for that. No, no victims. But it, it was quite an interesting weekend. So we're being joined now by our homie. I'm, I'm calling him. My, my hashtag for him is show off. But I'm just gonna call him world class because he is a really classy, world class official dude, especially in the in the realm of track and field. So I'm calling him world class. What's what going on, ridiculous? I apologize for my for my tardiness, gentlemen. I was uh, out coaching and uh, doing that world class track thing. That's why so, he's uh, a show off. See, this whatever. Is see, I got a cookie that make you feel better. I'm about no, to ruin my work it, right here it's on wrapped the show. In, it's wrapped in the same thing Yeezys are made out of. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't. What's going on? So we got. Glad you came on on time. Jesse's in the building too. Jesse's currently muted himself, but hopefully. He can come on. What up, Jesse? What up to the crew? What's I'm going here. on? He I just waiting, got out of the gym. That's my antithesis Thanks. right there. That's my that's my nemesis. He always went on to, un <laughs> to unmute. I'm try <laughs> trying to get some some food in as I listen to the to the show right now, but I'm here. All right, so. Do you want us to weigh in on this Yeezy action? No, 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 no. It was just, you know, a quick segue into why we're here. Um, so I'm going to pull up on screen the article that was written because I'm going to allow our homie world class to get his victory lap. <laughs> so the conversation last week, quite a few of us, went the direction in terms of who would win the weekend with um, we went with Adidas I would say right most of us went with Adidas yeah I, I went with Adidas that. Adidas well it's safe to say when all factors are considered and at the end of the weekend the real winner in our eyes based on our criteria was Under Armour. Because as purely stated, and as mentioned in the OSD blog post, OSD live blog post, and as our homie world class so eloquently put it last week, the only thing Under Armour needed to do was show up and perform. And they did. Yep. And they were visible everywhere. And they released a shoe, a signature ball shoe, at the lowest price point of all signature shoes that released. And, yeah, they had a party, which we didn't get invited to, but that's neither here nor there. We'll deal with them later on that. But <laughs> <laughs> it also led, segued into their now very good campaign with Jamie Foxx. So... When you put into perspective the, the fact that they didn't have to spend anywhere near as much money as Nike yep. or Adidas yep. or anyone else who tried to jump into the fray in New York City for All-Star Weekend, yep. Under Armour came out on top. And the homie Kodoma mentioned you know, Reebok and some of the boutique stuff, and that was all good. <laughs> I, I understood that. But in the end... People were there to watch basketball. And if you could put something on court that would perform on a star that would come through for you, you would win the weekend. That's that's what my gamble was in, in picking Under Armour. So Steph Curry wins the three-point contest. I think at one point, what did he go? Um, like 14 for 14 in the end? Something like 13. that. It was 13, right? Wasn't it 13, 13 straight? 13, yeah, 13 straight, all 13, the money balls except for the last one. Straight. He, he straight took everybody out in a three-point competition, then came in the next came came in the next day in the All-Star game and played his ass off and had some very memorable highlights. You know, the shoe came out 120 bucks on Friday, which is very respectable. And from what I've seen in the stores where it is, prominent placement. Under Armour's got prominent placement in places where in stores like Foot Locker 
on 34th Street in Herald Square, the big 10, 15 million dollar a year store, front and center. I won't say it wasn't a gamble, but they bet on their horse. They put all, all their chips on their horse, and he came through. Well, to be honest, I mean, let's not leave out the fact that he was the number one vote getter of all NBA All Stars this year. Yep. Edging out the $90 million man with Nike, a.k.a. LeBron James. Um, he just played his butt off. And let's add to the fact that there's a rumor, still waiting to hear confirmation on this, because we spoke about this in, in pre-show conversations, that Steph Curry's shoes were stolen en route to Brooklyn. Why Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why Brooklyn? Why you do that, bro? Brooklyn. Come on. Brooklyn keeps on taking, We're taking it. Exactly. <laughs> the shoes that they wanted to debut in Brooklyn to be seen on his feet were stolen. In route. Ah, son. Not happening. Exactly. They debuted it on the train. <laughs> <laughs> not happening. The Oliver debut. Oh, man. So... Luckily for Under Armour, and shout out to Ty and Mike and everybody who's on the team over there, they had backups waiting on deck. So we got to see all the different colorways and highs versus lows of the Curry 1 that we were supposed to see this weekend. It was dope with the stories that we, we always tell about story. We always talk about concept. Um, did he wear, in the three-point contest, didn't he wear the father-son one? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Completing the story that his dad was once in the three-point contest. Like, I, I dig what they went with. Like I said, they, they, they put all their money on their one horse. They didn't split dollars. They put their money on their horse, and he paid. Yeah, it was a safe bet. I mean, all he had to do was... All he had to really do was become a finalist in the three-point contest. He didn't really have to win, but for him to right. be on fire the way he did... And he broke the record. Most threes in a three point contest. Even, even, even though it's a no, safe bet, even though it's a safe bet, he still has to come through. That's like yeah. going to the racetrack. You got your you got your hundred dollars and you're gonna play that trifecta with your horse winning. Yep. You, you, it's a safe bet, but that's all your loot. And it's on and, that and horse. He's gotta make the he's gotta run the course. And he and ran my, the course. And mind you, the only advertising front and center blatant that I saw and D I sent you a picture of this was right across the street from Madison Square Garden was it's small in comparison to everything Nike and Adidas mm -hmm. was doing. Mm -hmm. A small <laughs> LED billboard that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him intermittently, not even specifically his. Yep. Intermittently on this billboard, like every three minutes there were other oh. ads and then it would lead to him. The whole thing was fun to watch. I mean, if you're into it, like we're into it, you know, we we got to have the design, uh, the PLM come on or the designer come on and tell us about the shoe. We saw some of those colorways, yep. and you know, we all made our predictions about what it was going to look like. But the, the thing about it is, I mean, you know, so subtle. You know what I mean? Like, there's no question about Steph Curry's ability. There's no question about it. Like, he's so under the radar. It fits perfectly with what UA is doing with this whole. You know, you can hear us coming. Yep. Adidas and Nike are scared on both sides. So, you know, when Kevin Plank was like, I got both of them on notice with, with Kevin Durant, he they're in such a great position to just to just kind of chill, I to just kind of plan everything, you know what I mean? And the way that they segued from the All-Star game to that commercial. Yep. Like, how, would you, how would you have liked to have been the official, the executive on that going, Thank God. Somebody pushed the button on the Jamie Foxx commercial. We won. It worked out how we wanted to. That's the easiest call he ever had to make. Kevin Run Plank is someplace very, very happy because he just got a whole bunch of press that he was not yep. expecting. And, and he didn't know how to get it. You know what I mean? He listened to his people finally, but they made the right bet, like you're saying. Yep. You know, Steph Curry. Remember way back when we were talking about the Kevin Durant thing? Mm -hmm. And I remember we, we discussed it. I said all they needed to do was make God bleed <laughs> to, yeah. to prove he was mortal. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't get Durant, and we got somebody worth it. We got somebody that 
that came through and is now arguably on that level because he's in the MVP talk now. Like you said, he ain't got to win the MVP. He just got to be in the conversation. He's just getting started because you know for a fact, you know they're about to transition with the, de the decline of Kobe, with Katie not wanting to talk to the press no more, with possibly breaking oh, that yeah. team up, and yeah. LeBron, LeBron getting tired and not really sure if he can carry the team he has. Yeah. There's all yeah. kinds of eyes. KD KD couldn't have handed it to him on a more silver platter with his exactly. with, with with his transition from nice guy. Everybody's saying what happened to nice guy. He's called Steph Curry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Marketing uh, gold, bro. Well, like timing, they, timing gold. They, I'm very excited about the way the weekend played out for them. So I'm giving them one more. I'm not supposed to be giving him anything. I know the rules, gang. I'm sorry. I know I'm not supposed to. Can't be giving stuff away. I'm giving him this one because they better do it. And I don't need to be there for it. I won't be there for it. But they need to do it. Under Armour. Sign Zach Levine. Hmm. You Sign. think that's, he thinks it's possible? Or is someone like Nike going to go after them? Go after Sign. him? Oh, Nike, of course, is going to go after him. Like, they have been Kobe that. 10s already. Sign Zach Levine. He won the contest in, in Kobe 10s. So, you know. They need to sign him. UA, go after Zach Levine. Hmm. I mean, I think we all know that there's some, some transitions going on at both of the other houses. Um, yeah. But I don't know if anybody paid attention to the Sports One source. It came out during the week. Share with the viewers, significant, bro. Significant executive change happening as of October. Share with the viewers, brother. Significant. If you don't know who Don Blair is, Google him and find out. Just understand that every CEO has a CFO. And when the CFO changes, a lot of things change. Word. So, that's all I'm saying. Don Blair, CFO of Nike for the last 13 years, is leaving. Where's he going, Jesse? On a long vacation. <laughs> mm. <laughs> On a long vacation. Interested to see where he pops back up, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. I'm just saying change is in the air, strong. Yep, indeed it is. So we, we gave Under Armour the victory, which I think we're probably the only ones who do at this point, considering, you know, all the other fanboys were at the Jordan experiences and the Nike houses and all of that stuff. Fanboys. <laughs> all, all the fanboys, all the swoosh fanboys and, and, you know, the zombies, you know, the, the walking dead, if you will. They get into Zoom City and they got their sneakers app and everything else and now they can't see clearly. Um, <laughs> but something else, hate. Significant happened. Hate. something else significant happened this weekend. On Friday in particular, Kanye at the Rock Nation concert made it a point at his show right before he did Blood on the Leaves to say to the crowd, <laughs> we ain't wearing that brand no more. Ooh, he did? We ain't wearing that brand no more. Why are your feelings still hurt? Wow, he did. <laughs> so, here's the interesting thing about that, gentlemen, and, and ladies and disorders watching around the world. That Rock Nation Kevin Durant situation, that Rock Nation concert, rather, that he did in New York City, in uh, Madison Square Park, which is... Uh, about 10 minutes away from Madison Square Garden, was sponsored by Nike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is too, too confused, sweet. Man. That is too YouTube sweet. Is crazy confused to me. Nike said, yeah, you want to talk shit? Watch. Watch this. So they essentially, they essentially paid him yeah. for him to say, we ain't wearing y'all no more. Mm-mm-mm. Telling you, bro, your arms too short to box with God, bro. Keep going, keep going. <clears throat> you think you think that some some tantrum throwing music star is gonna outlast the swoosh? Keep going. I think the fight is admirable, though. 
I think the fight is admirable. I I won't. Really? I mean, it's admirable. Nah. Nah. I, I ain't giving so. Kanye that kind of credit. I, I think I think he needs That's to like just keep bro. it moving. That, I exactly. Think, I, That's listen, backward keep thinking. It moving. He's 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 still trying to prove a point. You know the best way to prove a point? Prove your point. Prove your point. Talk about it. Yep. Do something different. Well, if he would just keep it quiet, wearing his Yeezys at the Rock Nation yeah. Nike sponsor concert, he wins. He wins. But he gotta have the last word. Yeah. So now he looks like a child. Well, a, a child who sold nine thousand pairs at three hundred and fifty dollars a pop in bruh, about an hour. Bro, if you were Kanye West and had that kind of pull in terms of visibility, you'd sell that many shoes too. Like it, oh. it's got nothing to do. Like like you did with the interview with the or the the, the question in the kid on the street. The same as the uh, that wasn't the same as the. Uh, Jordan 11s, right? Didn't Jordan 11 sell faster than that? Didn't they do a billion or something on that? Yeah, 800,000. But, but you're also talking about half a million pairs, and some of them were pre-sale. I don't care. Yeah. We yeah. talk numbers. Yeah, but... I don't I'm care. Saying, we're good. You're going to cheer on Kanye for 9,000 pairs at 350? I'm saying the fight is admirable. The fight is admirable. Nah, that's a, that's an empty. Ball. It's not even in the same ballpark. Get it isn't. Here. But the fight is admirable. <laughs> no, it's not. The fight is not. It's admirable. not. It's not. He he did a really good job before you told that's me that. That's not a fight. That's a tantrum. Listen, that's listen, not a fight. That's a listen. child throwing a tantrum. He knew exactly how many numbers of shoes he had before he got up there and did that. And he still went to do it. <laughs> and, and half the people cheering with him was probably wearing some Nikes, so they are still wearing that brand some more. <laughs> you know what? Now that you brought that point up, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my they point. The, fight is, the fight is not admirable. The, if, if somebody, right. if, if they did the D Wells hold up one shoe, <laughs> that concert would have been shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody would take off their shoe. Right. <laughs> This this is we would have thrown a tantrum uh, and kicked everybody out of the building. Well, it was 17 degrees. I don't think anybody was taking off any shoes at that outdoor well, concert. That's true. But... That's true. <laughs> I mean, we all know that everything comes at ebb and flows. And if he's not careful, his low could come faster than he wants. Bro, my, my, this is my point. The last time he threw a tantrum like that, this shoe, <laughs> this line, this release yep. got pushed back three years. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And Nike then released his his catalog underneath him. <laughs> I just red think October's I, red October's in December. <laughs> I just think in, in in a roundabout way, what he's doing is he's giving his power, right? He's giving the power back yes. to the swoosh. Like, dude, move on. Like yeah. it's like being in a bad marriage. At some point you gotta say, Okay, fuck it, I'm done. And the one that says wow. that is the one that wins. The so, one that keeps it pushing. Nine thousand pairs that. of sneakers. I, you know what? That's that is a a good number. We know that it's this weekend. Correct me if I'm wrong, fellas. Right? It's this weekend. The rest of the sneakers are coming out. No, the 28th, yeah. February 28th. 28th. Oh, 28th. 28th. Okay, so next officially next Friday. Is that what that yeah. is? Yeah. Okay, so the 28th. So they're gonna move. They're gonna move. I mean, people oh, are gonna, yeah. people are gonna buy them. People are gonna move them. People are gonna sit on them. I mean. To me, it's just mindless. Like, like, like Paper said, this kid said, so the only reason you bought that shoe was strictly <laughs> because it was tied to Kanye West. No redeeming qualities at all. No, he struggled. Right. He struggled. So that my point is, Kanye West could sell donuts tomorrow, and he would sell a bunch of donuts because mm. he's got the spotlight in a media sense. That doesn't mean he did a good job on the shoe. That doesn't mean... It's just a different category. That's why I don't think the fight is admirable. I think it's a, <laughs> it, I think it's a rich, a rich kid with a microphone. I think it's somebody with a platform. And when you have a platform, you're always gonna get somebody to listen to the rhetoric. So mm. that doesn't really make an admirable fight. That makes you have the loudest speaker right now. You've got the loudest megaphone, so you can drown out even the good noise. For a minute. There we go for a minute. <laughs> I, I still say the ultimate way to just LL Cool J and crush him like a jelly bean is put Yeezys on ID. I'm telling you that that's that's one you might you might have just gave that one to Nike. If they do it, it's over. I, we, I said it last week on the show. I said yeah, if you want to yeah. shut him up, you put him right. on ID and then it's it's over. I'm 
It's he he quelled it. He, they, they put a muzzle on him real quick when they dropped that red Basically, October. Well, it's not about shutting him up. It's not about paying him back. The more that he talks about their brand, whether he mentions their name or not, it's still going to resonate with people that yep. he was with Nike. Yep. More people will talk about his Nike products than they will his Adidas. The yep. comparison is always going to be made to what he did with Nike, no matter what he says. In reality, I think he feels that he's on par with Jay-Z, where he's – where Jay Z said, "I'm not wearing throwbacks. I'm wearing button ups." Everybody started wearing button ups. That might be right. part of it. He's right. not at that level yet. On on more, what I think where his mindset is is that he's now given the freedom to express himself the way that he wants to. At least with the Yeezy One, that design was I think about 75% his, where his input was implemented, and the designers did the rest on the Yeezy Two. I think it was maybe 50-50 because it wasn't all him. It was mm -hmm. more the designer than it was him. And at least with Adidas, I, I feel, I don't know the whole story. At least with Adidas, the design is probably 95% him with input so far as materials and stuff like that and what he's able to do and what he's not able to do. So at least with See, Adidas, what I don't... he's getting the creative freedom that he wanted that he didn't get with Nike. I can understand that. I think what when, when you got somebody like Kanye with a platform, and I don't know, I don't even pretend to know him personally, so I, I make no character assassinations on him. But my thought is, when sometimes you have handlers, and some of this, what Kanye feels is being he's being held back, and he doesn't have creative freedom. Sometimes these people are doing him a favor. <laughs> when, when you're a creative dynamo. You just need to throw shit against the wall to see if it sticks. But you don't have to stand there and wait to see if it sticks. You just a guy throwing shit. Somebody else has to come and structure all of that for you and, and put it in a, in, a, in a more palatable sense. So all these people he thinks are holding him back over the years could have been doing him a really big favor. While he gets to stay wildly creative, they organize his shit. So yeah. So now he's got all this freedom, and he's opening his mouth. And uh, quite frankly, it sounds dumb. All of that brilliance sometimes goes the wrong way. Hey, he invented the leather jogging pants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just kind of crazy to me, like like how that goes sometimes. Where, like like Quab said, it's bringing attention to Nike. That would be like you breaking up with the finest chick in school, right? You she she mad fine. And you breaking up with her ain't going to make her ugly, but you keep her name in your mouth. So now you're just drawing attention to the fact that the fine chick ain't dating you no more. You lose. Because I got the ill street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, true test is when the, the true test will be when the right of release happens along with the uh, clothing the as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there, there's, honestly, been a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about his fashion store where people didn't necessarily understand what was going on. Right. And um, part of the reason the models were dressed in nude colors was to bring attention to the pieces from the line that they were wearing. So if they were wearing a full stocking uh, body right. suit that was nude, it was to pay attention to the bag or the accessory that they were carrying or right. the sweater wrapped around their waist. So a lot of times dealing with people who are, I don't even want to say genius, who are uh, ahead of their time, most people don't get it. I think Kanye is ahead of his time, and maybe five, ten years down the road, this shoe will be it. I mean, we might be living in Waterworld, and that's the shoe to have, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I Kevin mean, Costner. Yeah, I wow, don't know. That's a good Costner drop. It is the whole line is I'm I'm with Quab on this. It is very forward, so it's not you know I'm not again we're not going to assassinate nobody's character here. The, the 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 line is line is very forward. You know if you're looking at this picture right here, it looks like that's another aircraft air air bomber jacket like everyone's done the last couple of years. Yep. Put orange and and gray on green on the outside. It's the same coat. Maybe he used materials. I don't know. You know maybe he's reaching for pieces from. His childhood, his, his essence, because that jacket has been around for ages. So, you know, maybe he is doing some things that are a little bit forward, you know what I mean? But it's but, like, but the, there still seems to be some confusion. What are you trying to do? If you well, want to be forward thinking and do that stuff, then do it. But when you do that, shut your mouth. 
Because there's other stuff that's going on that's just you just taking away from what you're trying to do. And bro, for me, honestly, actually, if that stuff ain't better than H and M. If that stuff, what'd you say, Piper? I said he's not actually because he still got albums to sell. And, and and if that stuff ain't no better quality, I don't care whose name is on it. I don't care how many Italians you told me to touch some damn leather. If that stuff ain't no better quality than H and M, I'm shopping at H and M, bro. Sorry, because that's what it looks like to me. This looks like an H and M ad. It looks like a Uniqlo ad. Tell me where he's being really forward. All of all of his clothing, all of his clothing collaborations, even with APC, there are no labels, there are no designs. There's it's just him. So it's just. A matter of if you want to buy something that has Kanye affiliated with it, or do you want to just go to Uniqlo or H and M as you mentioned and buy something similar? It's not exactly the same right. because if it's the same, H and M and Uniqlo would be charging the same prices. I think they would charge differently just because of their models, but I hear exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I, I hear that too. I mean, but it does look like a Uniqlo or H and M ad. That's the truth. <laughs> it totally does. I'm telling you, it it looks like H and M right now. Like if he don't drop that soon, H and M will get that business on, on people who, not quite frankly, even the dumbest of those out there spending high dollars on fashion, maybe buy one piece and then supplement with the lookalikes from H and M. I mean, the, you know, even we, the high fashion know. people are starting to collab with with H and M and Uniqlo, yeah. and Uniqlo because yeah. they understand what the game is, and the game is units. The game's not this high fashion Burberry <laughs> shop where only a fraction mm. of the society shops. You want to get paper, mm. you got to move units. That means those orders have to go. Yeah. And so Truly those orders are with H&M and Uniqlo. The thing the, is with these lower level... I'm sorry, Quab, go ahead. I was going to say, the thing is with these lower level collaborations with Uniqlo, H&M, even with Target, these designers are using that as a platform to get their name out there. If you look at the collaboration with Philip Lim and Target, that got his name out there. A lot more people know who he is. So in a sense, it's like a lost leader for the designer. I'm going to put my name out there on a product that's going to Target, that's going to HM, and that's going to Uniqlo. It's not necessarily bringing my name down, but it's getting my name out there at a cheaper price point. It's almost like right. a commercial. No, so you're right. You're absolutely it's, right. It's a cheap commercial to, to have maybe somebody save up their money and buy the $500 t-shirt from his high fashion line or from somebody else's high fashion line. So it's not to be discredited, but it is what it is. Kanye is doing what Kanye knows how to do. And as long as companies are willing to deal with Kanye, who he is, what he does, how he runs his mouth, he's going to keep on designing. Even if a company isn't isn't willing to deal with him, He's still gonna do it. He tried to put out that pastel stuff. I don't know what happened to it. It never came out or whatever. He was doing he, it. He's still doing it. He, he's still gonna do music. He's still gonna do fashion. He's still gonna run his mouth. You're still gonna see Kim Kardashian butt naked. It, it's it's just gonna keep on going. That's it. Yeah, until until the implants shift and then she gotta go back and get those fixed. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. So we spend... then North I think wants to be yeah. naked. <laughs> we, we spent some time on Adidas. We spent some time on Under Armour. Now let's talk about the swoosh. What did they do this weekend? What didn't they do? <laughs> well, it, it, and although what did what what didn't they do? What was the end result of it? The same is business as usual for them. They know exactly. with these events that their aim is to make their brand bigger. So when you put out shoes that are mare posits or whatever the hell it is and the and re-releases and restocks is just to get their name out there. I've seen more Nike shoes being resold from All Star Weekend than I've seen any other brand. So mm -hmm. even though that they probably released a large the largest <laughs> amount of shoes Nobody is picking, well, not as many people, I won't say nobody, not as many people are picking up the shoes from the other brands during All-Star. As a matter of fact, I ordered a pair of Reeboks from All-Star Weekend that are still sitting on the site right now, and they're limited to a 1,000 pairs, just a 1,000 pairs, and they're still sitting on the site right now. But anything from Nike is pretty much sold out. 
or very limited sizes. So mm -hmm. Nike is doing what Nike does, putting their name out there, putting their product out there, and putting out what people are looking for, whether it be to resell or to wear. These other brands, whether it be the design, their marketing, they need to take note because Nike is selling their shit and these other people are just kind of pushing their stuff. Well, Reebok, this just isn't their game anymore. It, w it was evident because they relied so heavily on collaborative efforts with the sneakers and stuff and Packer, but there was no real presence where it mattered this weekend. Well, I, I think that at least with those collaborations, they did a good job in execution. Yep, they did. I don't think, I don't think the word was out in, in a broader fashion than how Nike did theirs and everything else because that, that sneakers and stuff, Packers collaboration, all of that shit is ill. I ordered a pair of questions from that yeah. collaboration. Yeah, all of that stuff is ill, but I don't think a lot of people know about it. Or so care. They, well, well yeah, even, yeah. If they, even if they didn't care, the things that they did at that pop-up shop, they had Akeem Olajuwon. I think they had, they had Akeem Olajuwon, they had Allen Iverson, they had Sean Kemp, Shaq came through. They had a lot of people there, but I, I just don't think the word was out. That's just on that end. I don't know about the other stuff because I wasn't really paying attention. Well, I walked past the Sneakers and Stuff Packers pop-up store on the day of um, their releases, that Friday. Mm -hmm. um, actually, no, not that Friday. It was a Wednesday before, I believe. And um, Thursday before, actually. And um, there was that line down to the corner, if you will. There was a lot of that, you know, local something's going on here, buzz for the shoes. But, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, you could see I scanned the line and it's most mostly resellers. It yeah. was resellers and you know the space was on 38th I believe or 37th from Broadway one of those two mm -hmm. um, and up a little distance away from Madison Square Garden it wasn't in direct proximity so it was really out of sight if you will mm -hmm. um, so basically like you said you had to be in the know or care enough to get to the Packers shoes sneakers and stuff spot to get there and get the shoes but when I walked that line that morning of the releases, I can't remember exactly what day it was now. Everything was a blur from Wednesday on. But I saw so many people that I've seen on so many other lines who buy and resell shoes. I was like, okay, this is what this is. This is this is this is a camp out for a flip. So it's it's with Nike shoes, it's fifty fifty that way. You got some people who really like that all star outlet prone garbage, and then you have people who want to resell it. But at the end of the day, Reebok is not, this ain't their game no more. Basketball is not their thing anymore. Quab, so, yes, how, how is the reselling game with Nike products thriving when they have such, uh, when we know for a fact that there's restocks? I don't understand it. Okay, with that in mind, it's, it's a time game. So, given the fact that All-Star was this past weekend, um, a lot of people are rushing to resell all of this product. Even with the fact that a lot of the, or I'd say 50% of the product that was released during All-Star are restocks, whether it be the Just Dons, uh, all kinds of other retro Jordans that I saw. It, it's a matter of supply and demand. Now, in taking that into consideration, your average reseller is not that bright. Sorry to say it, but it's true. Um, <laughs> they are not yep. necessarily keeping track of what's being released, where it's still currently in stock, and how much it's currently going for. And there's no business acumen with a lot of resellers. I yes. would not categorize myself as a reseller, but I operate in that same vein. So with me, it's more about my turn, getting my products in and getting my products out as fast as possible with maximizing my profit in that same uh, time period. These guys don't look at it that way. They don't calculate in their time. They don't calculate in how many other people are going to have the same product. They don't calculate in how much money they're putting out in comparison to how much profit they're bringing in. 
So it's just more along the lines of kind of dumb luck, where mm. they happen to pick up a pair of those phone posits and somebody is willing to give them $700. And the way that I look at things is, is I calculate things in percentage. Yeah, you may be making $200 off of a $100 investment, but I'm making the same percentage of profit by only putting out $16. And I'm moving the product faster and I have multiple units where you just have that one unit. So mm. if they're looking to broaden their base, <laughs> they can't because the product isn't out there. So there's very little insight into the way consumers purchase their products. They just so, got you just so, gave them an econ lesson, Quab. That's exactly <laughs> what that is. It's economics 101 that most resellers do not pay attention to. So it, it, it's just, it's a game to them. They figure that, hey, if I stand on this line, I'm guaranteed to, to get a shoe. I'm guaranteed to make a couple of hundred bucks on top of what I, I put out. I mean, given the fact that there are some shoes in particular, like the Yeezy, where you'll put out $350 and make about a $700, $800 profit, those are far and few in between. So you cannot bank on things like that to happen all of the time. If they did, you wouldn't make as high a profit margin. So a lot of times these guys are getting in and getting out at that one time where people who actually do this over and over and over again know how to play the game. Know that, yeah, All-Star is happening. I might buy a couple of those shoes, but over here they're having a clearance sale and I'm going to buy all of that shit at $20 a pop. Yeah, I may put out $500, $1,000 over here, but I could take that $500 or $1,000 over here to this clearance sale, buy up 20 pairs of shoes compared to the five shoes I just bought. But they don't see it that way. They just, they, a lot of times it's a combination of the hype associated with social media and the hype that they will make a $700 profit. And it's it, mm -hmm. it just don't think in terms of business. That that's it. Bacon soda. I got bacon soda. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's that's all it is. It's it's bad business. So I mean that's what I figured, but it's just even even just to hear the whole reselling thing, I'm like it doesn't make any sense, especially when it comes to Nike. I'm like what, why? They've continuously proven that they're going to put out more shoes. So why why do you think that's something that you're going to be doing? My, my phrase, it's, still, it's still supply and demand. There's still yeah. people who don't have the shoes. So yeah. that's it. And once once a shoe is sold out and a person didn't get it, their mind is automatically saying, okay, I know I can go to the secondary market yep. and I might have to pay three or $400 over retail. Yep. So they're going to do it. Because yep. they yep. want the shoe, the demand is there, yep. and the secondary market lets them know that hey, I can still get that shoe that I want. I just may have to pay more. Which is but why it, it also feeds the the restock because then Nike sees that and says, oh, you want that shoe, and and like Quab said, based on units, we can make our money. Here you go. We'll we'll kill the resale market for a few months. And re-release that shoe that you want. Well, it's kind of like nice. you know, it's kind of like what D was saying too. It's like it taken, it's taken away from, <clears throat> I kind of like what the, not the game or lack or lack of better word, but what the shoe culture has been about. You know what I mean? Because if you want a shoe, you can get it. You might have to wait a little while, but you're gonna get it, at some point. You know what I'm saying? So knowing that there's restocks, why? What's, so if you get a shoe after it's been out, the supply and demand is gone, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, let me hit the secondary market and get it. What are you going to wear it for a week and then put it away? Oh, Because well, something now else you, is dropping and something else is talking, dropping and something else is just, dropping? Now you're talking rational, and that don't work. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're making, now you're making too much sense. There is no rationale with that. You're, you're dealing with people who have large amounts of disposable income, a lot if you're if you're looking at the guys on on the show right now, a lot of us have houses, kids, car notes. These these people have a lot of disposable income. There are very few people 
above the age of, let's say, 25 who have $1,000 of disposable income to spend on shoes, just solely on shoes. I I see guys on a weekly basis who will buy a shoe for $800 and then post pictures for social media, maybe wear it one time out, get some oohs and ahs, and the next week that shoe is for sale. Yep. The very next week. Yep. True indeed. There's there's no rationale. (laughs) The other aspect of it we got to remember too, which doesn't get spoken about a lot, but retailers are resellers too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you think about that on just a national level, that also contributes to that resale market, and it helps a lot of retailers around the country who don't have Nike accounts. But yet we see their stores are full of Nike and Jordan brand shoes. So let's not cut that part of the equation out of the mix too, because. I know people who their establishments contribute to this. Mm-hmm. Especially. It's, it's all it's all based off supply and demand. Whether you're a retail shop, whether you're an individual seller, it's based off of supply and demand. The the yeah. biggest thing is that a lot of these resellers have no business acumen. So there's no the they the rationale that they have is just I'm gonna make a quick buck rather yeah. than sustainability. Because standing online in negative five, ten degree weather to get a pair of shoes to sell for seven hundred dollars just isn't worth it for me personally. Nope. For nope. other people it may be worth it. They may have certain circumstances where they need this money or whatever the case is. But for me it it's not worth it. I know I always call it hood business versus good business. Yeah. For me personally, I know that they will. Most of these shoes will eventually pop up, whether they be in small numbers or large numbers, somewhere else. And all I'll have to do is make a phone call. That's it. It's, it's frustrating. It's not yep. frustrating, but just from where I sit out here to see that, to see how those things go. You know what I'm saying? And then to drive around town or take a run over to campus and see that stuff's given away. You know what I mean? Like, you know some of those things in the, in the conference room, like we talked about, you know, they'll buy anything, and they put it out there, and you got that, and then you have reselling, too, yet when it comes to them, it's given away like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the values that, that are placed on it is, is difficult. So when you think of the whole reselling thing, it's like, really? It goes back to what we were saying about where our heads are and where our priorities are as a culture. You know, so well, also, it also it also goes back to your to, to what area you're in and and mm-hmm. who you know yeah. and who you know. I mean, let's be honest. You know, we all have connections and all that stuff, but I don't the, have no connections. I don't know what you for the kid <laughs> <laughs> for the kid that doesn't have any of those connections and like like Quab said has you know five to five hundred to a thousand dollars of disposable income. They like hey. I don't want to wait for the resale. Fuck it, I'll pay. You know, whatever price. You know, my favorite is is the cats that go to the the big box stores and see these managers, and the managers know, hey, I got it. I got it. You know, all they care about is sell through. So if this shoe is not as high as I thought it was going to be, I got you know, Mr. Reseller over here, or Mr. Mr. Reseller two times two or three who's going to buy up my allotment and go sell them in their consignment show, store or their website. All I care about is sell through. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, real talk, we all know, you know, the big box store yeah. store managers, they get their bonuses on and they get they get more pairs on sell through. Yeah. That's all they care about. And and not only not only can I get sell through, I can also get, you know, maybe two or three hundred dollars on top yeah. of my sell through. You know, just just for you giving you this opportunity to buy up, you know, a size run, you're going to throw me an extra 500 Hey, how am I losing? Right. <laughs> right. So that's why I said retailers are the resellers also that contribute to this because all somebody has to do in one area of the country is make a call to a retailer that they know have them in another area of the country and say, I'll take you a whole lot. Yep. <laughs> Yep, that are the original resellers. It's happening all yeah, the original since the eighties. Since the eighties. 
I'll say that one more time. That makes more sense. (laughs) Since the 80s, they've been the originals. Because you got companies who, you got shops who know. All right, well, it's not particularly for me, but I think I know who would buy all of these. So I'm going to put in an order for these when the salesman comes through. Yep. And I have seen 50, 60, $70,000 $70,000 sometimes worth of inventory moved from one store to another set of hands. You know, well, you know a prime example is, um, well, what's the shoe we were talking about last week? The uh, the Laser Ones. Like, oh. they're, they're gone down here. <clears throat> but I think you were saying, uh, uh, Sean, last week, or was it uh, r- ridiculous? I think one of y'all was saying they still sitting on shelves. You yeah, know, the world is small. Right now. Right, yeah, the country, the, 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 the country is a lot smaller now. The bottom line is, like you said, if somebody knows this information, hey, they're selling out in Atlanta and Alabama. Hey, I can call Omaha. You know what I'm saying? Give ridiculous a call, like, yo, I need you to buy up that sell run, sell that that uh that size run. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to PayPal you right now. Yep. Go ahead and ship all them joints to me, and then I I sell all that stuff for double or triple because. The, they they going crazy out here for them. They going ape shit ape shit for for laser ones out here right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a shoe that's sitting on the shelves that you can get probably on discount in Omaha. Yeah, or well, one store is going to sell it to another store on the on the discount. Oh yeah, they they do that a lot. Shifting yeah. shifting inventory to a different store altogether. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know what the good the better big the better big box stores are smarter. If they, if they're, you know, some of them, and we know who they are, they actually watch the trends on what sales and what areas. Uh, prime example, the the big box store that, that I'm familiar with here has got a whole got a whole new shipment of um the uh the what's they called the 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 Bulls the Broadway over, the, the Bulls over Broadway uh team mm-hmm. that, that you know Atlanta a red team black and black red and, and gray. Mm-hmm. Shit, that's Falcons colors. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, dog. I know people who are trying to get three, two, three, four pairs of those for themselves. And and, and are not sneakerheads. They just want the shoe just to go for for, for Falcons, you know, for football season. Mm-hmm. So we just got a whole nother size running that shoe. And they, they're they going to be gone in, in a day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's a drug. That's why, we, that's why we're here. That's why it's called obsessive sneaker disorder. It's a drug to someone somewhere. <laughs> but um, we're going to get into a couple of Twitter comments the homie Nabs down there in DMV area big Georgetown fan she said Kanye for Adidas is cool with me now he can stop playing Mr. Potato Head with classic Nike models <laughs> wow <laughs> great point word shout out what up Chris what's good um so where are we at now at this particular juncture <laughs> in this episode? What do we do now? I mean, show you want to give a quick Snicker Summit recap? Oh, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Let me see. What can I say? Well, automatically, it was better than the one for the Source 360 event. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wait, totally. I mean, 10 totally times totally. better than that Long Island University one. Yep. <clears throat> and this one had bad weather. Coldest day of the year, and it was 10 times better. Yep. <laughs> Good job, um, three sixty. <laughs> I mean, this is reminiscent of the Houston ones, just on a smaller scale, but a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of Dude. tables. <clears throat> Are you telling me the source fucked it up that bad? Yes, they did. Oh, you don't understand. Yeah. Right, let me put it this way: I took no, I didn't want. There was no reason for me to take pictures at the Long Island one. Zero pictures. No. Mm. no. I noticed there wasn't that many of those around. Yeah, you don't see a lot of pictures of that, but you'll see a lot of pictures of this Sneaker Summit. But yeah, it definitely was the proper Sneaker Summit energy for New York. Concerted yeah. the challenges they had and the competition that they had to deal with from days before. Um, the vendor. Oh, it, was a it was a good location, two floors, DJs yeah. on both floors. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> good amount of tables. Yep. Vendors from Come Clean Soap. Even Bobito was selling, you know, his book, <clears throat> some T-shirts and stuff. So, um, 
nice DJs. They had a female DJ called Beauty and the Beats. I think she's like 14 years old. She's she killed nice. it. She killed it. Yeah, she killed it. Um, uh, you had Yote with the socks. They had custom socks being made there. Yep. So it was overall good. You know, it was a good vibe. I enjoyed it. Yep. Yeah, it was it was a good event, you know. Shout out to Large Concepts. Shout out to Come Clean Soap. Um, yeah, Concepts. Jody. Ronnie Toriyoff came through. Yeah, that was good to see him. Um, but it was a great event. The proper All Star Sneaker Summit energy that we expect from, you know, the original All Star Sneakers, the original All Star Sneaker event. Um, that energy was there this time, and again, it was dumb cold. So everything worked out well. Shout out to Bob. Bob gave, you know, my son an autographed copy of the 10-year anniversary. Where did you get those? So shout out to Bob on that. Um, female sneaker fiends, of course, were all in the building. Shout out to uh, Adam, Marta, and his son Marvin came all the way over from Spain. That's what's up. And they oh, Dizzle. Trip. Yep, they planned their trip from Spain to visit New York. Purposely to make sure that they made the summit. So shout out to them. Hope they're still having a good time. They're gonna be leaving New York soon, but yeah, it was it was a lot of dope, good people, good energy, good times. You know. Oh, you got shout out the whole Houston crew that came through. Jay Nature, Tito. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Jay got stuck here because of weather. Flights canceled, but you know he stayed in New York two extra days. Those cats must have been complaining the whole time about how cold it was. Yeah, they used to it by now. Yeah, they were actually. They were complaining. Oh, okay. They used to it by now, you know. Craig came up, payback came up from, you know, down in Philly. Oh, word? Yeah, yeah, he came up. Yeah, he came up. That's the homie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, it was a, oh, and Joe PDX came through. Joe, Joe probably did. Joe did a lot of the work with the agency that did that whole Jordan experience and the one across. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So he was out there on business. Yeah, he no, was, he was out there on his own. He should have been on business, but he was out there on his own, I believe. No, he, he, said he, was, he had to work. He had to work while he, he, he was working. Work. Oh, okay, 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 good, good, good. Yeah. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's yeah, up. Yeah, he yeah. said he was working because he didn't get a chance to hang out long. Because I was talking to him for a minute, then I turned around and he was gone, and I got a text. He's like, "Sorry, he had to go." I was like, "Damn, son." Yeah, I don't even yeah. remember him being that tall. Somebody that's just walked through and was like, hey, show. I'm like, who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> he had on a funny hat. It was weird. Yeah. But I was like, yeah. oh, what's going on? Yeah. 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 Don't got some height on him, man. Don't got some height. Good dude. Not out of man. That's my yeah. yeah. really? We all got to get together. It's good seeing everybody. You know, I just want us all to see everybody aware. We all got to get back to Houston, man. Yeah. We, all, we all got to get back to Houston. Yeah, that's uh, what I say. Summit is coming back to New York, um, supposedly in the summer. So the rest of y'all can make y'all way up here. Uh, oh, the challenge. This summer, I spoke to Kadoma. Hopefully he'll talk about it next Wednesday. But um, summer should be coming up here in the summer. He hasn't that set a summer date up. yet. I need to get to New York. That might be what's up. Yeah, but you know, I guess y'all all need to, you know, come over here for a chat. That's y'all what's up. Y'all better start saving now, because summer's the most expensive time to come to New York. Oh, <laughs> <boy>. <laughs> come on, everybody else that agenda. Uh, magic, whatever they call it in Vegas. Come yeah. that time. While everybody else is over there, come here. <laughs> yeah, that's where Brian is right now. He's at agenda. So you know out. what? I got to say this. What do you say? I, Go ahead. I said, I got to say this. Speaking of New York, God damn it, paper, you got me on binge watching that damn Money and Violence. Yes, sir. <laughs> I watched that. I watched yes, the whole joint in two days. Season finale last night. No, it wasn't last night because I was I was refreshing was all day. night yeah, it trying today. to get it. No, it dropped it today. It, it dropped to the early today. I was I was literally look look. I was mad at hell at eight o'clock because it didn't come, and then I saw the tweet. I mean, the, uh, the Instagram, they said, oh, it'll be on 12. So 12, I done put the kids down. The wife is going to bed. I'm like, bitch. Look, I done got the Chromecast ready. And, and nothing. I'm refreshing like, yo, I got to see this. Jo- oh, yo, man. it's the most addictive show since The Wire. Worried up. But I heard they had technical difficulties on this they just did. last episode. They, they did. Um, they did. It was, supposed no to be up, it was supposed to be up at midnight on Cloud9 TV. It I wasn't. Wait. 
<laughs> it was. It was. It, it, was. It, it, it didn't come available until like this afternoon. I heard it's like a three minute conversation with one of the characters. I think it's Rafe and Ebro from our radio station, and it's just like no sound. You can't hear what they're saying. Oh wow! A word? Yeah. Well, you know that's the first thing I'm doing after I get off this this right here. Oh, I, get off you, the I come in the house. Just now I came in the house of Chinese food. My girl's like, I watched the last episode, the season finale of Money Advice. I'm like, oh my God, you act like this is must see TV. No, it, <laughs> it is. Me, <laughs> it is. Like, there's no sound at this part, like from the five minute to eight minutes, there's no sound. I'm like, so go Instagram them. What do you want me to do? Like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Uh, shout out to all like, oh, the Cloud Nine TV, Rafe and, and, and Miz and all of them, but yeah. I will throw out this much. We will be having somebody from Money and Violence on the show soon. Word. That's what's up. Oh, and I hear Shay works at Get Set, Sean. I heard Shay either works or used to work at Get Set. That's the word that's going around Brooklyn. That's the sneaky story here for everybody else. You remember? I used to like she. She used to. I remember seeing her there. Yeah. But um, yeah, well, they they be having some good shit on there. They be having some fresh gear on there, and you know they went into the the sneaker store one one episode and everything. That was Get Set. That was the sneaker sneaker store. Oh, okay. That was the joint. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I know a tie need to die, but we ain't gonna get too much into that. Y'all funny. I, I, I funny. feel like those. I feel like those dudes. I feel like those like dudes are family and shit. Yeah. For, <laughs> have you seen Money and Violence yet? No, no I, I haven't. No. I haven't seen, seen it either. Yo, where can I see it? YouTube. YouTube. It's on YouTube. Uh, I was watching the other. I was watching Noisy. I didn't watch Money and yeah. Violence. Yeah. Oh, man. The, the Noisy docs are good, but for, as far as the an online internet web series. Yeah. Link is in the chat. I post the link in the chat. It it is the best thing going on YouTube right now. Yeah, it is. Now. Oh, the, oh yeah, y'all asked me to watch the no, the noisy uh, Lana. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I know I know some I, I know some of them cats. That that shit is real, man. Yeah, what's I know. Noisy. What's, what's the new noisy. show y'all talking about? The noisy documentaries. Welcome to Atlanta, Chirac. Um, did they go to Jamaica? Oh, okay, okay. I saw the Chirac one. Well, they did the Atlanta series now. The Atlanta oh, I've series. I've never seen that. All right, yeah. I'll check it out. It's raw. <laughs> so. Real quick, real, real quick story. Those damn twins. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, uh, they, gotta, like they buy a lot of sneakers, bro. Yo, they buy a lot of kicks, but and they I know them, I, it's really funny because I first met them. I first met them at, at a couple of sneaker stores. I, you know, I bumped into them, but I didn't know them. But what's crazy is they remember me from trying to kick them out the club. Oh, hey, they was wilding. It's at the club. So I had, <laughs> I literally had one of them, like I had one of them in the headlock, and the other one was over there trying to like, yo, let him go, let him go. I was like, yo, I'll fuck you up too. <laughs> and I didn't, re- I didn't remember them until, until I saw them in the sneaker store, and they was like, yo, you the motherfucker that tried. I was like, what's up? They was like, oh, nothing, man. What's up? <laughs> yeah, them, them why, cats why are wild. You, they they, they are very very like wild. Like, yeah. like them cats are wild as hell, and they get they get love from everybody, dog. Yeah, they wild. I, I don't know how they do it, but yeah. So yeah, see if we can get them on the show too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll I'll need a couple connects to see what I can do. The oh, ATL man. twins, right? ATL yeah. twins, yep. Yeah. Yo, dude. Cooking on the damn yo, that shit blew me. Yeah, Curtis Snow <laughs> cooking it up for that dude. That right that there. that blew me. That straight blew me, dog. Yeah, that's when I said this is real. <laughs> it just yeah, got and then, and then the guy goes, so do you get high while you smoke this? He's like, shit, yeah, of course. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I can. <laughs> but you get a lot of content. He's like, hell yeah. Oh man, yo, but you see how scared he was, and he was sitting on the porch with him, and he made him drink from the same bottle with him. <laughs> Yo, I watched another one with um. Did you see the one with um, my man? Uh, oh shit, Waka Flocka. Yeah, I saw that one too. That one was fucking hilarious. And the one with, with, old boy, with Waka and uh and, and and Gucci on that shit, and the dude <laughs> drank from the from the bottle. Uh-huh. He was like, yo, you, you know you you know that's your bottle now, right? He was like, you know, yeah. you know, because dude was straight, you know, he, he was a lame. You could tell he was trying to fit in. Uh-huh. And you know how somebody give you the bottle to, to drink, and you don't supposed to drink from the fucking, like, really put your lips on the bottle and shit. Yeah. 
He but Curtis Snow made him do it. <laughs> yeah, that was some wild shit, by the way, too. Curtis well, Snow you don't suppose do you don't suppose to do that shit. Curtis Snow made him do it and then took it right back. <laughs> you know, first of all, this is the same dude that's cooking on on live camera, so that's a it's a, he's a special breed. Yeah, he is. Wow. Well, man. I'm watching that part. That's not how you cook crack. At least not properly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, hey, it's a family show. Family family show. Now, I mean, from like from movies and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of time to go now. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm muting myself. Where are you? It's time. Not how you cook I'm here. From movies. This is not how you crack. <laughs> That's it's not how you crack the cook. No, well, he said, he said on movies. the movies, though. Right. Yeah, he's been on the movies. <laughs> he's been on the movies. So, man. Because, you know, we so real on here. When you start going that exactly. way, somebody's going to tell you the real way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm muting myself. <laughs> Ladies I'll and be back. Hold on, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen in the sneaker world, we are exactly the people. <laughs> signing off. We will signing not, off. We will not <laughs> show you how to cook the crack. Yo, this is episode number 338, Fashion Art. NBA All-Star Weekend recap. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to the size 15 king who joined us, but he had to go. He's on his grind early in the morning. But the Soul Doctors, the illustrious panel thereof, are here. You disorderlies who are watching, we thank you very much for watching. Got anything that you want to share with us, drop us a line at info at OSD Live. We'll show you how to invest. You got a topic on the show you want to hear about. Um, by all means, just... Do what you can to uh, drop us that line, and we'll do the best that we can to get your issue addressed, especially when it comes to inventing, uh, investing. Um, also, I got to remind folks that um, Thursday, you know, after episode number 337, episode number two of From the Feet Up actually has premiered on YouTube and Network A, so you guys can go over there and check that out, leave some feedback, spread the word. Um, I'm going in and doing episode number three by the end of this week. What will I be talking about? You'll see. You'll have to wait till the episode drops. But <laughs> until then, everybody who's been watching to this point, episodes one and two, and leaving that feedback and the support, thank you very much. But we don't stop. We're going to keep moving with episode number three and beyond. So props nice. to the game. Shout out to Brittany. Um, shout out to Ryan. Shout out to AJ, the whole staff over at um, Network A. Shout out to you guys, my soul doctors, and all the disorderlies around the world who's showing that love and spreading the word on it. So, And if you haven't, catch up to it. It won't take up much of your time. It's not money and violence like. You know, <laughs> something new and different we're offering to people with the same raw, uncut perspective that you've been getting from OSD for almost eight years now. So. D Wells, we gotta roll out. Pimpy. We gotta roll out. We gotta definitely roll out. So y'all walk with us, talk with us, make sure you come back and rock with us. Episode three hundred and thirty-eight is in the books. Until next week, as always, be safe as you walk, watch your step, and always keep your laces tight tightly. Y'all be safe. We are up and out. Ooh.